Hello everyone, this is Take from BigHeadTalker.com and welcome to BHT Studios. I'm here to do my review of the brand new Fujifilm XF 8-16 to F2.8 RLMWR. I've had this lens for a few weeks and I've pretty much plowed through this lens. I've dragged this big guy everywhere I could uh, whenever my wife would let me take this with me, but it is kind of a honking lens. Uh, and I've pretty much had it glued on to the X-H1 because I think this is a really great uh, combination. It's a heavy lens. This X-H1 has a big grip. This lens doesn't have image stabilization, but this body does have stabilization. But this camera obviously can go as well on any other X-series body, but I just thought this would be a great match. So uh, this is my review. And so let's start it now. So to begin this review, uh, the combination of the XF8-16 to with the X-H1, this was, I was comparing this combination with this trusty combination that I've had uh, been using for the past few years on trips pretty much all over the world, which is the X-T2 with the 10-24. to Now when I heard of the 8-16, to I was intrigued about the F2.8. And I was also intrigued about going slightly wider than this lens. This goes to a 10 mil or a 15 millimeter equivalent on full frame. And this thing goes to a 12 millimeter equivalent on a full frame. So, you know, it's, it's not a huge three millimeter equivalent difference, but optic, when you look through it uh, on certain shots, it makes that slight difference that you need, that slight little bit of pulling in from the sides power. So this is sort of what I was looking at in terms of combination. So uh, what did I think of this, uh, uh, lens. Well, first of all, optically, this lens is beautiful. Like its uh, sister lens, the XF16 to 55 f2.8, another red label lens. Uh, there's nothing to complain about this. The focus is smooth and quiet and fast. Uh, the quality of build is very obvious. Uh, not that the 10 to 24 isn't built very well, but you could see that this is uh, definitely deserving of that little red label. This is a, a pro series lens. And as I mentioned, on my unboxing and first impressions video optically this is a very complicated lens 20 elements in 13 groups and this lens here this uh, 10 to 24 is no slouch either it's 14 elements in 10 groups so this is a complicated design lens as well as is often the case with uh, high performance lenses and ultra wide lenses to correct for bending in so much light but uh, I knew that with uh, that much complexity half the lenses are some kind of a special lens it's either a spherical ED super ED nano coating this is a very complex lens and as I shot with it I could clearly see the difference between this XF 8 to 16 and the 10 to 24 if I pixel peeped and um, you know the 10 to 24 is fantastic starts at f4 uh, it is optically image stabilized so you can hand hold it to a much lower shutter speed except with this you have the the body stabilization which is fantastic to compensate for that but uh, even still uh, wasn't the sharpest at f4 the the 10 to 24 you have to stop down if you really wanted an image sharp you stop down to about f 5.6 to f8 this lens same thing very sharp right off the bat f to at 2.8 and at 8 millimeter it's so wide it's hard to say just in terms of um sharpness because your field of view is even though your subject is flattened across there's no need to shoot at f 2.8 then right because you're not trying to separate your your subject from the background or foreground but if everything is flat you know then you can stop down but i did look for corner sharpness especially when i was focused to close in infinity and a lot of my pictures as you can sort of see behind me here I was shooting kind of straight up at buildings and for those shots, I don't shoot at f2.8, I do stop down. But I did a couple of quick sharpness tests and definitely this, this lens is sharper than the 10 to 24, uh, but you do pay for that in both size and weight. And I think that's kind of the overall story uh, between the X-H1 and the 8 to 16 versus the X-T2 and the 10 to 24 is size and weight. And if it's worth for you to carry around the extra weight and the extra size uh, for better optical performance, and it's not mind-blowingly better, but definitely discernibly better performance. And so depending on what type of photography you're doing or videography, uh, but I don't recommend this lens for video. 
I did shoot a little bit of video and I even playfully did some vlogging with it. All right, I am, I came in from where I live out in the forest and now I'm in the urban forest here in Gastown in Vancouver and I heard rumor of there being someone really cool inside Revolver at the same time and I don't even know, I don't just take a look and just see it. But if you are a videographer and you're gonna match the your frames uh, per second rate to your shutter speed. You can't put ND filters or any kind of filter on the front of this. So you're pretty much stuck at maximum F22. There's no way to correct for that. So I found even in daylight, you're down at the lowest ISOs possible. You're still, you, you know, it's just, you can't do it. So this is not really a, a video lens. And if it is, you're using it for a very specific purpose, indoors, low light, you know that you won't have problems uh, with your your shutter speeds or something like this the 1024 has a 72 mil filter thread in the front You can put ND filters you can put polarizers you can you know even for architectural or just general photography You can put filters on here This one you can't and so other than that uh, so for video I would say this lens is out uh, for stills uh, this is an amazing lens. Um, you can use this for a variety of type of photography depending on, on what you like shooting, uh, architectural, interiors, you could do landscape, nature, but you kind of need to know how to use a ultra wide lens because if you're not used to it, the first thing people say is, wow, everything looks far away. But the point of this lens isn't just about how wide you can get, but often it is a separation between your subject and your background or foreground. So if you put your subject in the middle, it kind of pulls everything else far away and it creates that juxtaposition if that's what you're trying to do. And so I've tried playing with this lens and I do find that sometimes I just need to zoom out to 16 millimeter, which is a 24 millimeter equivalent, just to kind of get a normal feel. And even 24 millimeter wide equivalent is still considered kind of, it's still an ultra wide, focal length. So uh, this lens here, you can go to a 24 millimeter or 36 millimeter equivalent, which is a, uh, a wide angle. But to me, a 35 millimeter equivalent is now today's standard lens, not a 50 millimeter. So with this one, you can go to standard and you can go to ultra wide uh, very quickly from 10 to 24. So in terms of versatility, this is 8 to 16, 10 to 24. You got a wider focal range. Uh, both of these lenses are constant lenses, right? This is f4 constant, this is f2.8 constant. You have optical image stabilization on the 1024, but you do have weather sealing with this lens. But to me, the weather sealing is just a bit of a bonus because I never shoot in direct rain anyways, because I don't want my lens to get wet, especially the front element. Uh, I would shoot with an umbrella anyway. So I've never had a problem with this camera shooting in the rain because I shoot with an umbrella. So I would rather have had optical image stabilization in this lens, but I understand that because of there being almost no optical compromises. There always are, but uh, less compromises. Uh, the image circle is quite large. This is much smaller as you can tell. And that's why the stabilization of this is about 2.5 stops when you attach it to the X-H1 versus getting five or more stops of stabilization on the X-H1 because there's so much image circle uh, in this lens, less optical compromises. This one, to keep it compact, it had to be F4 and also to throw in the OIS. So this one here doesn't have that. So in the end, using it, if you are a stills photographer and you are really into architectural or you really need that ultra wide to have a perspective that's quite unique where people look at it and like, wow, how did you get that shot? What lens was that? It's fantastic, very well corrected, more corrected than the uh, 10 to 24. Uh, although you can, you know, if you're really picky, you can correct it in post. But again, you do get a bit more vignetting. You got softer edges. This one, uh, even a 2.8 is very uh, sharp along the edges and less light fall off. Uh, at 2.8, by the time you stop to the F4, it's fantastic. And if you stop all the way down the F5.6, that's probably the, the perfect sort of spot you'd be shooting uh, with this lens. Would I, would I buy this lens? As an all-around lens, I wouldn't get the 8 to 16. The 10 to 24 is still more to my needs because I vlog with this lens as well as do architectural uh, street. Uh, because you know, again, you can 
jump to 24, right? Which is like a 35 millimeter equivalent. So that's a great focal length for street photography. So you could do uh, architectural, ultra wide, street, you could do video, you could do vlogging, you could do a lot with this lens. Uh, this thing is optically just a powerhouse, but more limited from eight to 16. Uh, but uh, if I have an opportunity to have a project where I needed a lens that was high performing, so let's just say I went to Hong Kong and I did a special project on shooting buildings and, or, or you know, that sort of thing, I would, on those occasions, and I, and I didn't need to vlog, you know, cause you know, this is, this is quite the monstrous uh, combination here to vlog with. But um, if I did have a special project and I needed this lens, this one is a lot harder to say no to. Cause right at this point, I kind of want to take this lens to Hong Kong and take architectural photos or any city where there's great architecture. I think this lens is, it's hard to, to I mean, it's, it's only a two millimeter difference, but you could see it in the photos. And so, um, yeah, if you're into architectural, you're into ultra wide, I think you will really enjoy this. And if you have an X-H1, actually shooting with this lens, it was nice with the grip. You don't even need a strap. You just walk around with the, the camera like this and it's, it feels very stable. In fact, maybe even a wrist strap, but you know, I was even using the, the photo app to trigger a lot of the photos. I would hold the camera out like this and then use my iPhone, use Bluetooth, connect, and then Wi-Fi connect and then use the trigger and actually trigger the photographs. And when you use the app and you have raw only, when you use the app, it also does create a JPEG so that you can see the image right away and then transfer it to your phone if you want. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, but even holding out like this, my arms got kind of tired doing like this, but uh, great photographs and great perspective, great field of view and allows you to play with your perspective. So that's my review of the XF 8 to 16. You're getting a fantastic lens, but at a cost. Like this thing here is, let me see here, currently it is about $2,000 US uh, for the 8 to 16, and you're paying uh, $850 US for the 10 to 24. So in terms of cost performance, you know, like $2,000 is, is a lot of money for this lens, where this lens here can do 80% of what this can do on the, on the wider end, right? Telephoto and this will still do better because it goes all the way to 24 where this only goes to 16. But uh, you're paying double the price, double the weight, double the size, no front filters, not really great for video, but man alive if you're doing architectural ultra wide angle stuff, this is a fantastic lens. So thank you so much Fujifilm Canada for letting me borrow this. I will probably borrow it again when I go to Hong Kong because I really do want to do a special project with this lens in Hong Kong. So wait for that. But for now, this is my review. Thanks so much for watching. And don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll talk to you soon. Happy shooting. Peace.